days that you know some stuff was messed up, but he's about to turn it around.
just tell me like this. Ha, Shonda Rana Boku. something in your heart. I've been trying to put this thing together all night long and, and if we don't share it, amen, you, some of y'all, some of y'all, man, y'all got lost in the worship for a second, amen. I looked out over the crowd and, and I almost had to pass out up here, amen. God bless you. Let's welcome our internet audience really quickly, even though they've been here throughout all this worship. Yes. Hallelujah. We welcome you. In Jesus name. Come on, let's go very quickly to the book of Acts and and I'm not going to preach to you very long because we don't have very long. I'm just going to talk to you really quickly from the Holy Scripture. And, and, and I'm going to preach this next week as well. Amen. Our, our servant for next week is scheduled to be uh, Pastor Helen Claiborne. We're going to ask her to preach on the second Sunday. And I'm just going to deliver uh, all of this word on next Sunday. Amen. Uh, but I want to I share something with you. Uh, uh, go to Acts chapter number one and just keep your finger there. We're going to use five chapters today. I'm just going to give you a brief little layout of where we're going with this message. Amen. Uh, but how many of you believe and know that the world is waiting on the church? Yeah. yeah. The world is waiting on the church. The church uh, has had power and had authority. But what do you do when you don't use the power that has been granted to you? What do you do when you don't use the authority that has been dispensed to you? Wasted authority is not authority. Wasted power is not power. 
ladies and gentlemen, essentially, you can use it. You can have a sword and not know how to use it. You can have a 45 Magnum and not know how to use it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, perchance you can uh, understand that in some cases, many people use a AK-47 to try to kill a mosquito, and that is the wrong weapon for the wrong situation. Did you hear me what I said? And sometimes what happens is, is people use the wrong weapon in the wrong situation. And that's why the church is looked at as a place of, of just religiosity or crazy, chaotic people who feel something emotionally. And then they ultimately move with this joy and this stuff that they conjure for themselves. But one thing that the world has to understand is that the difference between the church and the world is that our sins have been eradicated. Uh, you didn't hear what I said. The real reason why we have joy the way we do is because Jesus Christ not only died on the cross uh, we, that we may have eternal life. Uh, he didn't just die, but then he got up in holy sovereignty and in holy authority that led us to know that our sins have been eradicated. And now we have something called eternal life. So the difference between the world's concept of who Jesus is and our concept of Jesus is that the world's concept is, is left with the idea of catechismic thinking or in understanding that Jesus Christ is still on the cross. And so the Catholic or the, 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 uh, the Catholic position, or well, Catholic meaning universal, the universal position is that Jesus is here on the cross. It's not that Jesus is just on the cross, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that the understanding of him being on the cross is great, but he didn't stay on the cross. He bared the sin of every man, and then he got off the cross, amen, and then went into the grave. He got up out the grave that we might be able to get up with him one day. That's why when we sing one glad morning, when this life is what? Over. We're not staying here. What we doing? We are flying away. We're going to Superman up out of here, ladies and gentlemen, because our God is able to give us eternal life. Our God has given us a joy that this world could not give us. Our, our God has placed in us something that literally gives us the understanding that we are able to fellowship with him. If you witness the yeah, yeah, talk, boy. Talk, Thomas, talk. And so, 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 so what we're looking at is the book of Acts chapter number one and Acts as you know if I were to speak to the theologians that are here at Liberty Life Church Acts chapter one is really just a continuation of Luke the gospel, the gospel of Luke Luke the great physician, first of all we have to understand ladies and gentlemen that Luke was not a parent with Jesus, Luke was not one that was walking with Jesus, Luke is only writing based off of what he heard, mm. uh, it's interesting when the world here hears what they hear versus what the church hears what they hear. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the difference between the world hearing what they hear is this, that the world prays to the big man upstairs. Mm. But those of us that have not met Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, we still count him as Messiah, the Meshach, the Mashiach, the one who was prophesied in the book of the Old Testament and the one that is to come. As you understand, he was and is and is to come. Say that with me. He was and is and is to come. That means that he is the past, he is the present, and he is the promise of the future. Oh God. Somebody say he is the past, he is the present, and he is the promise of my future. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, one thing you have to remember is that God taught you to breathe before you took your first breath. Uh, oh God, have mercy. So if God is the one that taught you how to breathe, you came out your mother's womb knowing how to breathe because God had breathe the breath of life in you. So he woke something up in you that was before time, which means he sits out of time, letting you to know that he is your past. And then once you're going through hell in your life, he is your present. And because of him pulling you out of the hell, he is your future. Somebody say he's my past, my present, and my future. Yeah. 
And so when we look at Acts chapter 1, what we have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that Acts chapter 1 deals with what we call the ascension, the ascension of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 1, we see the ascension of Christ. Uh, uh, we find that his sovereignty is not just in the death, in the burial and in the resurrection, but his sovereignty is in his ascension. Uh, perchance you remember Doubting Thomas. Remember Doubting Thomas says, he says that I'm not going to believe that it's Jesus Christ uh -huh, until I see the very holes in his hands. So the thing you have to remember about Doubting Thomas is that Doubting Thomas has to see the holes in his hands. But Jesus took the stripes in his back. Mm. God have mercy, Jesus. Uh, he, what did Thomas ask to see? Come on, talk back to the preacher. He wanted to see the holes in his hands. But the Bible does not say that he was healed by the holes in his hands. It said that by his stripes, mm, he was what? healed. Why didn't Jesus show Thomas his back? First of all, ladies and gentlemen, because there are some things that you should already know about your God that the rest of the world does not know. Oh God, I preach it better than you're responding. And then there are some things, ladies and gentlemen, that you should know about Jesus just because of what he did for you. Yeah. Jesus could have turned his back and showed him the stripes that gave him his healing, the stripes that gave him his understanding of who Jesus was in his sovereign position. But what Jesus did was he put his hands out because that's all he asked to see about him. Can I tell you that the difference between the church and the difference between the world is that the church is like God and Thomas. They're looking for the holes and they don't know about the stripes just yet. But if the church really knew about who Jesus was, they ain't just talking about the holes in his hand. They're talking about the stripes that got on his back. They reminding uh, everybody that if you want a healing in your body, there's some stripes that was on his back. Uh, the church should be reminding everybody that if you're feeling like you're down and nobody's there for you, there's some stripes that was in his back. Uh, I don't know who this is for, but for the next 30 seconds, uh, no, five seconds, because we ain't got but 30 seconds left, uh, I dare you jump about your chair and say, thank you for the stripes, oh God. Thank you for the stripes, oh God. Yeah, some of y'all are tripping over stretch marks. Uh, but you ought to be thanking God uh, that he took the stripes on his side. What you worried about stretch marks for? Put some cocoa butter and lava on it. Uh, Cause the stretch mark needs a stripe. Uh, he is the alpha and the omega because of the stripes. And because of the fact that the stripes were on his side, watch this church, what happens is, is in chapter number one, immediately, sit on down, we got you, we got you. Uh, in, immediately in chapter number one, you see what we call the descending, right? So we see that the Holy Spirit, Jesus, he speaks of the Holy Spirit, which is to come. Here's why my message is entitled, Take Me Back to Church. Because what has happened is, uh, let me tell you a quick story. Uh, back when I was 15 years old, uh, yeah, there was a preacher that had invited me to come to New York City and preach. I came, I preached a very large church, amen? I go and I preach, and the driver that they sent to pick me up, uh, he, he looked at me and, and, and he was asking, um, what's your name? And at first, I didn't want to tell the man my name, New York City, Boston Red Sox fan. I ain't trying to get beat up. Amen. Y'all know what it is. And so I'm, 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 in, I'm in the airport, and the guy's looking at me, and he's saying, what's your name? Now, I ain't going to lie to you. At first, I, I, I wanted to be like, you better back up. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm the only thug at church today. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, the, the, the man asked my name. And then he says to me, he says, are you Pastor David Thomas? And I said, yes, that's me. 
And then what happened was he began to look at the picture. He looked at the picture and then he looked at me and he said, are you sure you're Pastor David Thomas? I said, yes, I'm Pastor David Thomas. Now at this time, I was just age 15, amen? I was just the, 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 the little youth preacher that came out of Grace Church of All Nations. But what happened was the man had somehow had a picture of me from when I was like 12 years old or 13 when I first started preaching. At 15, I had a mustache. At 15, I had sideburns. At 15, I was all muscle. Now I'm all of that. Amen. And so, 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 so what happened was, is he looks at the 13 year old picture and he looks at the 15 year old picture and he says, are you sure this is you? I, I looked at him. I said, the devil is a liar. Yes, it's me. The problem is, is that he had a hard time deciphering who I was because there was some transformity in my face that made me to no longer look like a baby that made me to no longer look like who I used to be. See, the real reason why the church is not easily identified anymore is because the church don't look like what the church used to be. The church don't look like the church anymore. The church don't look like Acts chapter 1 any longer. The church don't look like 3,000 souls have gotten added to the kingdom. And so now people cannot decipher who the church is because the church looks looks like the world uh, rather than the church looking like what it used to be. I don't hear nobody up in here, but I wish I had some real life space uh, that can say I might not have it all together, but I got the Holy Spirit uh, and I got the Holy Authority and it's time for me uh, to look like what I used to be. Oh, God. Oh, you ain't hearing me up in here. You ain't hearing me up in here. It's time for the church of God to use the authority that has been dispersed unto them. Yeah. Come on now. Come yeah. on now. I'm preaching better than you're responding. Come on now. Come on now. I'm going to get about 100 amens on the internet. See, hear, hear this. Hear this and then we got to go. Uh, yeah. I'm going to finish this next week. But what got me is that in my studies, as I'm looking at Acts chapter 1, I want for you to go really quickly to Acts chapter number 2 now. Look at Acts chapter 2. Uh-huh. No, excuse me. Yeah, let's go to Acts chapter number 2 because I'm going to deal with a whole lot of this stuff. Next week I'm going to put this whole thing together for you. Now, uh, I want you to look at Acts chapter 2 and I want you to see what was happening on the day of Pentecost. Now, now watch this. Before you say anything, I want somebody to jump up and read Acts chapter 2, verse 12 through 13. I told you I'm feeling about this today. Acts chapter 2, verse 12 through 13. Read it out loud. So they were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Where did this come from? Where did this come from? Other than one, he said, They are full of new minds. Uh huh. So, so, so what happened? What happened in Acts chapter 2? First of all, the Holy Spirit comes. As the Holy Spirit comes, he begins to fill the hearts and the minds of people. First of all, uh, the church has got to look like the church because um, if we don't look like the church, that means we're not praying. Mm. Uh, the church has got to look like the church of old because everybody should be on one accord. What am I saying to you? That uh, it, it's no sense in us worrying about the name of a preacher unless the preacher is lifting up the name of Jesus. Mm. Yeah, that's why some people won't come to this church because they've worried about the name of the preacher and not the name who the preacher is preaching about. Uh, yeah. It ain't about the name of any man. It ain't about the name of T.D. Jakes. Uh, it's not about the name of Dr. R.A. Vernon. It's not about the name of Dr. E. Christopher Hill. It's not about the name of Benny Hen. It's not the name of Rod Parsley. It's not the name of Joyce Meyer. It's not the name of R.W. Sandbox. It's not the name of any of these men of God. It's not the name of any of these women of God. Because the last time I checked, there was no power in their name. Their name may get you into a conference. Their name may get you a preaching engagement. Their name may get you your name and highlight it. But their name won't get you into heaven. It is the name that's above names that causes me to act foolish. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't get foolish when they tell me T.D. Jakes is in the room. Amen. I met the man before. Good to meet you. Hey, Bishop. Good to see you. Yeah, I don't get foolish when they tell me Rob Parsley's in the room. I say, amen, good to see you. Hi, Dr. Parsley. Amen. I don't get crazy when they say Benny Hinn is walking down the street. Amen. I just say, praise the Lord. Amen. See, I, I don't get foolish with none of these names because none of these names is what's going to get me into heaven. I get foolish when I understand that Jesus has just hit the room. Because when Jesus shows up, every knee will bow. And every tongue confess that the name of Jesus, he is Lord. That's why I got a joy in my soul. That's why I act crazy. Because at the name of Jesus, I got joy in my soul. I got peace in my heart. Peace in my mind. Healing in my body. I'm saying the truth of myself, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it said in Acts chapter number 2, verse number 12 and 13, that those that didn't understand what was going on, they began to mock them. Yeah. Essentially, this is those that did not understand that the Holy Spirit had begun to birth the church. Yeah. First of all, the first pope, Peter, uh, first church, was led by Peter. Peter was a racist. Peter was cruel. Peter was a shrewd man. He, he was very wise. But he didn't do a good job in teaching the people that didn't understand. So they mocked them. The issue with the church today is that we're being mocked by those that don't understand because the church is not teaching them that do not understand. Uh -huh. And so you get preachers that get up and sound deep talking in tongues, he time a bow time, I should have ate a mosquito and all that other stuff. And, and, and nobody knows what talking in tongues really means. You understand here? And so now what has happened is, is people will come to a church, they will come to a service, they will feel something, they will feel better than what they did when they walked in, but they don't know why they feel better than what they walked in. Yeah, there's an old song that says, you won't leave the way you came, in Jesus' name. You can be bound, oppressed, afflicted, Sick or lame, but for the Spirit of the Lord is still the same. So you won't be the way you came in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now see, see that song lets you to know. That the reason why you feel better is because the same Holy Spirit that was your past is the same Holy Spirit that is your present is the same Holy Spirit that is your future. Mm. Now, if we were to look at Acts chapter number three, I want to just go there. I got about one more second before the janitor come. Uh, go to Acts chapter number three and look at what it says. Now, now, in Acts chapter three, what you see is there's a man by the gate called Beautiful. There's a lame man who, who is dealing with sickness and disease. Amen. Some believe that he was blind, but, but, but he's by the gate called Beautiful. And in him being by the gate called Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen, here comes Peter and John, and now he's crying out. He's like, do you have any money? Do you have any change? Is there anything that you can give me? 
Isn't it interesting how he's by something beautiful, but he's got an ugly situation? Mm. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Uh, he, he's by something beautiful, but he's got an ugly situation. Uh, see, can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that beauty don't make your situation better. Uh-oh, what did I say? Oh, uh, yeah. You can be in a beautiful situation and still have a whole lot of misery going on in your life. Uh, that's why the church has got to get back to being the church. Uh, because the church that is the church without power is the church that has gone to a beautiful service uh, and still leave with an ugly situation. Uh, I don't know who this is for, but that going Liberty Life Church... Uh, will not be a beautiful church and then leave you with your ugly situation. If you got a drug problem, we're going to fix that situation. You got a money issue, we're going to fix that situation. You got a problem being a womanizer, we're going to fix that situation. I don't know who this is for, but you ought to thank God that you're in a church that don't care how ugly your situation is. We ain't just worried about beauty. We gonna be the beast. Uh, we gonna step up on the scene and make it all better. Let's do this for you. What? He, he's in an ugly situation, but he's by the gate called beautiful. And he comes and he asks, watch this, do you have any money? Peter and John replied, <laughs> Silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, yes. I give unto you. Yeah, uh-oh. Yeah. Look at this parallel. Look at this. Ugly situation, buy something beautiful. Ugly situation, buy something better. Mm. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful that you don't miss the mark of the power that you really possess. Take me back to church, please. Because we got too many people that got great church, but ain't no power. Yeah. We got too many church services where it's packed out Sunday after Sunday. The choir banging. The preacher's outfit banging. The preacher's car banging. Everybody got money, amen, on, that sits on the front row, except for them that are looked at as less than. They the ones that the usher usher to the back. You ain't hearing me when I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they, they, they buy something beautiful, but if they're not careful, they're going to miss something that's better. Yeah, they're going to miss the authority. They're going to miss those that got their healing because they're so busy, comfortable next to something beautiful. I wish I had a church in here that would realize the power that's within them. Yeah, I know that we ain't a big old church, but we got a big old God. Yeah, I know we ain't got a whole lot of money, but we got a whole lot of God. And when somebody walks through those doors, silver and gold. Have we not? But such as we have, we give unto you. Jeremiah said, It's just like fire set up in my bones. What do I got? I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy God. And He is a healer. He is a way maker.
Hallelujah. 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 